This is reaction number third. A good student among you will memorize all these reactions I'm teaching in order right when you are listening. I'm just saying good student will do. I don't know what you are doing. Reaction number four that we are going to study is Stefan reaction. In Stefan reaction, what happens? We start with a cyanide. This C triple bond and this group is a cyanide. I hope you know this. If you don't know, know it from now. This is cyanide. On cyanide, we add SNCl2, stannous chloride. And uh, after that, we add stannous chloride is added together with HCl. And after that, we add water. Water basically will carry out hydrolysis. Then we get an aldehyde. This is a important reaction. This is also a important reaction. Last reaction was also important. Now this is what we get. We get aldehyde. Now to know this much is enough. If you know the reagent, if you know the reactant, you know the product, you know the name of the reaction, then you can solve the problems. But knowing the mechanism is very important to build an insight and to understand and to cope up with a given new reaction that you might not have seen before. So we only see the mechanism. Cyanide giving you aldehyde. How does happen? How this could happen? Think of it. What is the most reactive part here? Water is not very reactive. Water is not reactive at all unless the reagent is reactive. So water is not going to initiate the reaction. And we don't take water initially. Water is taken at step number two. Step number one, you're taking stannous chloride and HCl. What could happen? This HCl will be in ionic form. So mostly it will be in ionized form. H plus and Cl minus. This is how it is going to exist in the system. Now, stannous chloride, SnCl2. What about this? What is SnCl2? What can it do? What can it do? Ooh, ooh. Now, what can it do is, it can, uh, I don't know. You tell me what it can do. If you have studied S block, in S block, you must have studied uh, inert pair effect. And inert pair effect is uh, something that sten belongs to carbon family, if you know. And the electronic configuration, the general electronic, the carbon has electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2 and 2p2. Below carbon you have silicon. Silicon will have a outermost electronic configuration as 3s2 and 3p2. Suppose this is 2s2 and this is 2p2. Now in carbon, carbon's electronic configuration if you see, now you can see that there are two lone pairs, but we know that carbon always make four bond and four bond requires four lone pair. So uh, uh, not four lone pair, four unpaired electron, I'm sorry. This is, this in the electronic configuration, we cite that there are two unpaired electron and, but we know that carbon has four Carbon always make four bond. So there must be four unpaired electron to make four bond. So this pair, this electron from 2s is excited to 2p and this pair gets unpaired and when it gets unpaired it produces two unpaired electron and hence we have four unpaired electron. So that's how it goes. So what happens here is this electron has to jump into a higher orbital. This requires energy, but when it makes, when carbon makes two more bonds, that energy is compensated, right? But, but as you go down, then the shielding effect is decreased and because of less shielding effect, the inner nucleus has greater attraction for its electron. So if this electron is more tightly held, it is more strongly attracted by the nucleus, the tendency to go up, to go into the higher orbital is considerably decreased, right? So it will not 
try to go into the higher orbital, a larger amount of energy will be required. So if the bond that is subsequently formed after un unpairing this pair, that doesn't release sufficient energy, then the tendency for this electron to go into the higher orbital and participate in reaction is decreased. So this s, this s orbital, this electron in this s orbital tends to be inert towards reaction. And this is called inert pair effect. Inert pair effect decreases the stability of a ion to, or the tendency of an ion to go to a higher oxidation state or it decreases the stability of higher oxidation state. So tin will not try and go to Sn plus 4. It will be relatively, relatively stable in Sn plus 2. So if you go to even lower than 10, then the tendency to go for this S electron to go into a higher orbital is considerably decreased and in that case it doesn't go at all. And 10, 10 is just on the borderline. It is not very inert not to go into the reaction and it is not very, very uh, reactive, this, these electrons, so that it very quickly goes into the higher orbital, as is the case for carbon and as is the case for silicon. But this is what inert pair effect is. Now, because of inert pair effect, the tendency to go to a higher oxidation state is decreased. The case with tin is that you have to understand, there is no like quantitative answer to what is the tendency of 10. We have to know the, some facts and based on those facts, we deal with situation. Now, this may be a new compound, SNCl2 for you. So, I am giving you an information and you remember this. Now, 10 is having such kind of inner pair effect that the tendency of 10 for going from Sn plus 2 to plus 4 is not very great, but it does have some tendency. So, because of that some tendency, it will try to go into a higher oxidation state. Meaning that this pair of electron in S orbital will is, a, is having some tendency to go into a higher orbital. Not as great as that of carbon and silicon, but still it has some tendency. So, because of some tendency, this tin, which is in an oxidation state plus 2, will try and go into the oxidation state of plus 4. But that tendency is not very great. So this is, so, so because of that what happened, when this tin from plus 2 goes to plus 4, it is losing electron and loss of electron is oxidation. So tin will undergo oxidation. So when it undergoes oxidation, it reduces some other compound. So it doesn't have a great tendency to go into higher state. It doesn't have a great tendency to get oxidized. So it is not a great reducing agent. It's a mild reducing agent. That's the point I wanted you to come at. The bottom line of the whole discussion is SNCl2 is a mild reducing agent. That's it. Now, using this, let's see what happens. Now, tin. SNCl2 is a reducing agent. It's a mild reducing agent. So it is going to reduce someone. Who is going to get reduced? This reactant. How it's going to be reduced? Reduction can be done by two method. By adding hydrooxygen. Reduction can be done by adding hydrogen or removing oxygen. Here in this case, we have taken zinc. We have taken HCl, not zinc, sorry. We have taken HCl, that this HCl, the hydrogen of this HCl is going to be used to get added on this reactant and hence reduction of the cyanide will be carried out. So what is going to happen is this 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 tin which is in the state of plus 2 is going to go in the state of plus 4 and give two electron. So those two electrons are going to be absorbed by this H plus coming out of HCl and H hydrogen is going to form a hydride and that hydride is going to come and attack this carbon because this carbon has partial positive charge because nitrogen being the third most electronegative element of periodic table is going to, is going to pull electronic density from all three bonds. So that carbon is going to be deprived of its some electronic density that's going to bring a del positive charge on this carbon. 
So this hydride is going to attack this carbon. 